And just just to get to the title, you know, the, the, I sort of came up with this title myself because I'm just thinking we, we all at some t- stage are going to be managing or coaching teams, I'd imagine. And we're always thinking, how do we how can we do the best possible job? Are, are there core principles around getting involved with teams? You know, whether it's an outside team or whether it's your own team, what are the key things that we would want to put in place or maybe what are the key things that we would might want to avoid. So I'm just thinking about our audience here. A lot of them probably get involved for the first time. Some of them maybe with their teams, some of them with ladies teams, some of them with club teams, and possibly some of them with developing squads, academies, and that. So just to bear our audience in mind. So maybe just if I could start off with you, Ricey, if you don't mind, just just maybe a, a brief overview of, of any nuggets that you would have out there, anything that has worked for you in the past, or maybe anything that you would avoid or or or, or that you would, wouldn't want to do, you wouldn't want to be involved with. Roger, R- Ryan and Roger, can, can I say, sorry, I apologize for interrupting there. Can I say, and I meant to say at the start, I am recording this session. I think it's, I have to let you all know, coaches and the people involved, that I'm re- recording this session today. So thank you. No problem, Tony. No, probably. Thanks for having me, Roger and Tony. And I, I think you, you probably should ask Maliki to go first on that day. Um, <laughs> no, but... For me personally, I've probably like I've been involved probably with with Fermanagh the last four years, and I'm probably involved this year with Calvin, and um, probably for the last five, six, eight seasons, probably been been coaching with the ladies team in St McCartans. Probably thoroughly enjoy that. Um, it's, it's probably it's a different bit of football, but it's nice. And I know I know I've been offered even before that. There, I've been probably loyal to the girls more or less just because of the probably the work ethic that a lot of the girls. They do give, and I know that I've been asked to take clubs before. I'm more or less, I've just been told, but sure, you can do the you can do the ladies or or way with the ladies. And probably the thing that, it, that struck me with the ladies is it probably was their see was their worth that see was their worth ethic, and I've probably the same thing even probably going to Fermanagh, and even probably I'd plan not to take no team this year or just see relax on it. But then when I was approached, maybe to take a look at Calvin. Probably been a team maybe that I'd watched from afar maybe for the last couple of seasons and and what struck me probably was just probably off the ball probably how well they worked as a team and it was just a work ethic and do it and um you do your own thing and I'm a great believer in following your gut and if if your gut's telling you something's not right or if the offer if a club wants you in coaching or even in, in any coaching session usually your gut's the right call and whether that's be down to maybe making a call on the player or making a call on the line and if you're <coughs> the player off or, or, make, or make a switch, usually I think maybe if, if you don't follow your gut, i found in any cases that, that any time that I haven't followed my gut, it's probably blew up in my face and so any time that I have followed my gut, it kind of, it has worked out all right for me. Now, it's not going to work all the time for you, but I'm like a firm believer too as well, like, as long as you're confident with your own with your own choices on it, at the end of the day, it's your mistake, and uh, I can live with that if it's my mistake. And uh, sometimes you have to own your mistakes. And I know even even taking my characters or taking that there, and I've always I've said to the girls if, if I felt I've let them down, I've, I'd, I'd tell them that. And if I made a mistake on the line, I'd tell them that. And it's the same even with Calvin and even with your time and with Fermanagh, you know, like. You, you had to make your calls and if you felt you got it wrong, you got it wrong. But at the end of the day, it, it's your opinion and any of the opinions that you do do, you're not doing it for the for the worst of the team. You're you're trying to do it for the betterment of the team. So that's probably yeah. starting off with one thing that I can. Right. No, that's good. So the whole thing about being honest, being open and being transparent is, is key. Just Maliki, from your po- point of view, any any values, anything that you feel that you could pass on to some of the coaches that are on tonight? Um, first of all, again, just like Ricey said, thanks very much, Roger and, and Tony, for inviting me on here. I'm delighted to be to be on and, and uh, sharing whatever thoughts I have. Um, I suppose I suppose the first thing I'd say is that there is no right and wrong in in coaching or management or anything else. You know, there is no I suppose silver bullet that that you can say, look at this, this will work. I think it's a, it's a case of of. Uh, just going in and, and and doing what you think is is right and and sort of having having a you know the conviction of, of putting things in place that you think will work. Um, 
with regards to values, I suppose, Roger, I think it's uh, I think it's very important just that that when you go in and you 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 sort of paint a picture or you you say to to players at the start of the year what you're going to do and the standards you expect and so on. I think it's very important that you follow through on that. And that I think, you know, it's very easy at the start of the year to go into a group and promise everything and, and, and say the way things are going to be. And that's that's grand if you follow that through. But if you don't follow, players are very, very quick to pick up on, on wee things like that. And if you don't follow through on things and if you're not true to your word, they'll, they'll, they'll be very quick to see that. So I think that's very important just to, to have that honesty and, and to, to to follow through on things. If you say you're, you're going to follow through on something, then, then do it. Um, and I suppose then, you, you're just, you know, I suppose the, the values in that day you're talking about, and it's a big word that's used a lot about culture and one thing or another. But I think it is it is a very important one as well. And I think it's it's just a case of it's not it's 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 not a gimmicky thing or anything else. It's not about putting things in place that's, that's going to be gimmicks or, or or look well. But it's more just sort of the environment you you create, and that there is honesty there, that there is trust there, that there you know that that everybody's valued in the setup that it's not a case of of you know one person being um, more valued than another that that everybody is valued and and, and respected and that and the people will see that and if you if, if 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 that is the the culture that you're able to create people will see that and 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 they'll buy into that you know whereas i think it's 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 also a case if 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 you come in and, and make big promises and don't stick to them and, and aren't to the award then uh, players will see that as well you know so it's just it's just that i think it's, it's that idea of being honest and and and, and having that trust is, is very important so i'm just wondering maliki on that then would you if you're taking over a team for the first time would you have one to ones with players or would you just talk to them in groups uh, no well <laughs> I suppose again, there's no right and wrong answer. So it it may change from from time to time. And I suppose, in fairness, I've probably done it both ways. Uh, but but I would say I would always, you know, talk to the group first of all, and and again try to to paint a picture or you know give them some vision, you know, that 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 hopefully players will buy into, and that you know that, that it makes it appealing to players, and and, and it, you know if you, if you like excites players to a degree that they want to be there and, and the feel that it's, it's going to be worth being there uh, for that there. Uh, and then, you know, it's, there's a number of ways to do it, but I certainly would like to, to get, you know, get the the feelings of the players and whether that's through one-to-one meetings, whether it's through just chatting them generally at training or whether it's, you know, a questionnaire or whatever else it is. It's, it, I think it is very important to get their voice, you know, and it's, you know, it's, 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 just, a, it's just a very... Uh, sensible thing to do but also yeah. a very um beneficial thing to do to, to to just to find out what has gone on before to to see where where they see themselves in, in, in the whole setup and, and and things like that and and it, it gives you a good sort of um uh, foundation i suppose to work from and that you know where everybody's coming from and then you can you can when you're talking to them then later on and that they you've got that information to work on and it, it, it just builds up that relationship you know yeah. so uh, but no, I, I do think it is. I think it is. It is crucial to to get feedback from the individual players as well. I'm just wondering too. This whole concept that you see coming from maybe um, the All Blacks and that about a management group within the players, where you have some key players or maybe more experienced players. Would you work with a group like that that would have a role maybe above and beyond the ordinary player, even with with the knowledge of the other players? I, I, will, I will usually would, in fairness, would would have a, a leadership group, which would would consist of, again, not necessarily you know the, the main players. Certainly, some of the you know, and again, there, there's ways to find out you know who what players are are you know not necessarily respected most of the group, but what what players other players look up to and trust yeah. and so on like that. So it's getting a mixture of characters there, you know, and then you're you're trying to get the balance between if if you if you overload it with all older, more experienced players, well then the younger brigade can can yeah. feel left out of it. So it's trying to get that that uh, um uh, mix of, of players that that that'll uh, uh, represent all, all the group that's there. And I think it's it's a very useful thing to have them as a sort of a bridge yeah. between the management and the players. That you know, at, at the end of the day, it is all about the players. 
And if if you're doing things that the players aren't buying into or aren't enjoying or aren't feeling that it's worthwhile, then the, the sooner you know that, the better. So yeah. I think it is it, it it is a good thing. And 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 most times, in fairness, you know everybody's looking for the same end goal, and everybody's you know trying their best to 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 move the thing forward as well as they possibly can. So it's just it's just you know getting as many views as you can and, and, and keeping things streamlined and, and making sure that, that if there is any problems, you can deal with them yeah. fairly quickly and, and at the same time having everybody buying into everything you're doing as, as much as possible. I think that's a great point that you make, that if you do have a leadership group, it should reflect maybe a wee bit of the age structure of the team because it's a wee bit of feedback I got from a team maybe towards the end of the year that my management or leadership group had all the older mm. players on it. So that's, that's an interesting one. Right, so just from your perspective, and I know there's a number of people on here who are managing ladies' teams as well. Would you say that managing ladies and coaching ladies is different in any way? Is it does it require a different approach? Um, again, as Monarchy says, there's no right or wrong answer, and uh, probably with me now, I've been in with the girls now. I was I was in with the girls now for seven years. Uh, Again, you have to sell the picture. Um, again, you have to take in considerations of of the girl. They aren't like fat. they aren't like maybe the boys. And probably that when you are taking the senior teams, there's a younger brigade. It's more or less from you could have under six teams playing. Well, you wouldn't have that at a senior level, and you probably take that in the consequence as well. And as one thing I find and probably taken from the ladies is I find myself coaching is that they're more receptive. That they're more and more eager to learn and they're more kind of saying, well, they're more willing to try out and say, well, look, we're, we're, we're going to try this here tonight. And probably my, um, and I, again, so I, like I always say to the girls, and I think, I think Malachi is right, whenever, whatever group you're doing with uh, male or female, I think if you're totally honest with them, um, that's the one thing I look, I tell the girls maybe, sometimes maybe the language mightn't be right here, but I says, I'm just doing it to make us better. Um, now, a lot of them laugh at me right enough, but, but I always have a bit of crack with them. But the, the, there is certain things that you have to be aware of, maybe that you can't be full on hard all the time, maybe as if you were the same with the yeah. same with the fellas. Um, but at the same time, anytime you're chatting with the girls, you always, the girls always <laughs> say that they always want to get better and everything to come to the And that's one of the things we try to do at McCartans. We try to say, like, or, or any team that I do tell you, that, you try to make yourself that wee bit better, whether you're going to be maybe 5% fitter or your skills, or else you're going to come away from a session kind of going, right, um, 10%. I tactically know now what that means. If if we lose the ball, I know where I have to be or I know what sort of tackling I have to do. So we always try to put that to the players. And like as I said, like I don't... I think I think the only really thing with the ladies is just that you, you have to be aware maybe that you could have a lot of younger ladies in from from under sixteen that can be playing with with <coughs> the other senior teams with the men's usually it's just, it's the lads is usually eighteen plus you know so yeah I'm ju- I'm just thinking about that word culture and it's been bandied about a lot nowadays and and you know a lot of people are using it and not quite sure they actually know what it means but I'm just wondering Racy what does culture mean really. At the bottom, you know, at, in, in training and your everyday interaction with your players, what does culture mean? Well, I think it's again, I think culture is really when things, I, me personally, when it becomes second nature, and that's, and I think it's totally, it has to be built on every time. Like, and like you can't, you can may think we've got a good culture, but then I think, as you know yourself, things can slip, and it's like it, it's human nature. Like, people forget maybe that. All the, all, everyone we're taking is outside jobs and everything we're doing like we, we're not committed to this professionally and so yes. things things might happen in your outside life that you've no control so so when you're coming to training like you just made me up to the standard of it you know and it's just it's about everyone else reinforcing it. like whether it's coming half an hour early from training maybe that could be the start of your culture people look i think people look at culture and they think they have to go for the whole the whole lot of it to start that they have everyone has to be doing that everyone has to be singing off the same hymn sheet yes you need that but on a practical level it's not practical because yeah. it's not going to happen all the time like that's why i think culture like if you've 95 percent of your 100 percent of your squad coming and and they're expecting hey oh like 
it's good practice to come at seven o'clock for half seven training. See, see, that's culture yeah. because that's it's become it's, be, it's become the norm. It's become the norm, and it takes time. I think as Malachi says, like you can't. I think, I think a lot of people want to do this overnight. And it's very very hard. And for having a good culture and people looking after themselves, maybe all weigh the pitch and go to the pitch. I think if, if the players take more of it and if it's the players control it more and the players say, look, lads, we'll, 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 we'll be here at such and such or we'll, we'll get our gym session done, I think it's far better because there's only so much a manager can take or can do or a coach can do because he can be telling them and usually, usually you know yourself, so, someone's telling you to do something all the time, you just kind of switch off. So yeah. it's more player yeah. and, the, and the players enjoy it. and. And, and lead it out the better. Yeah. So the culture is owned by everybody, not just yeah. by management. Yeah. Well, like maybe there's something you want to add on that. I'm just thinking in terms of, you know, what what sort of culture you've built with, with Monaghan, with the loop and with the teams that you've been involved with over the years or tried to do. Hi, well look at it, <clears throat> very much what, what Ray is saying. And I suppose as uh, someone said once, it's a uh, culture something that's that's uh, caught, not taught. You know, and I think it's it, it should it, it's nearly that if if people come into the to the setup or a, around the setup or come in for the first time even, they should nearly feel a good atmosphere about the place. You know, an atmosphere I suppose where where people you know are, are, are they're not afraid to express themselves, the the freedom to make mistakes. Uh, there's a good trust between everyone. There's 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 an enjoyment there. Hey, but but and and people are allowed to be human beings too. Like the, you're allowed to make mistakes. We're all allowed to make mistakes, you know. And 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 that's including the management, myself, and everybody else. I'd be, I'd be the first to say that I make more mistakes than than most people there in, in a year. But it's it's nearly having that that you're allowed to be vulnerable as well, and that you're allowed to make mistakes, and everybody's in together. And it's, it's just that sort of having that environment that where where people. You know, trust each other and and uh, you know aren't afraid to make mistakes and and uh, it's just uh, that's uh, sort of a, a good environment to work in and and for people to learn uh, and, and and you know learn in a in a positive environment if you like. Okay, well listen, I'm going to move on maybe to try to address some of the other questions coming in, but I'm just thinking you know you start off at the beginning and everybody's in the same boat and everything's going well, your your pre seasons and all the rest, but ultimately then you start picking your sides and it. The players are not stupid by any stretch of the imagination. They begin to realise who's, you know, maybe your first 18 or your first 20. How do you manage to keep the other ones that be, that, that are beginning to realise that maybe they're not going to get a lot of game time? How do you keep them on board? Malachi, maybe if you start with that one. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to let Racy go with that one there. No, I know. He, he wasn't baiting to get in. <laughs> I, I learned from you, Malachi. I'll be taking notes here as well. <laughs> uh, no, it, it, it probably is. And probably, I would say, more so at at, at, um, at, at, at club level, there probably is more of a you know a, a hierarchy if you like probably most club players do feel well look at there's there's a there's a, a number of lads who probably will be all being equal will be on the senior team most of the time uh, and then there's other fellas who think well look at i'll probably be a reserve player and, and then there's a few in the middle who who, who can go either way uh, but I think again, it's it's about being open and honest, and and you know it's 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 it is giving everyone a fair chance. And I suppose that that's the one good thing. I suppose about the, the the leagues in in Derry last year, the county boys weren't playing, so you got a good chance to look at other fellas. And it meant then that if if they, if they did the business there, well then there was no need. And and I, but again, you have to be upfront. You know, you know, I, I remember saying to the boys, look, at, we're we're not going to try and bluff anybody and, and say, look at when the county boys come back, they're 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 six of the top. 30 players in the county so they should be getting on the club team so there's no point of saying we're looking to have to play the way back in or one thing or another you know yeah. they probably will you know in all probability that they will be in the team but then the other lads who are coming in who have done really well you know they don't make way for somebody else who has you know who has been on the team the last three years or someone that's coming back from injury and i think that's the sort of the the positive environment you, you want to create and that Everybody is fighting for a place, and and lads do see that if you say at the start of year, look at if you're doing the business, you you'll be on. 
And if they see that's happening in the, in the senior year, well, look, at th- th- there's a man that hasn't played senior football before this year, or he said, but he's on all the time now, and there's someone else there who has been a regular, and he's not getting on. Well, then, they're through the reward. The, the only thing they're worried about is really is performance and attitude and how to train and so on. So I think that's 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 a big thing. It's probably maybe a wee bit more different county level. In the, at county level, a lot of the fellas, a lot of the fellas on the 30 think, we should be on the first 15. And they're right because they're, they're the 30 best footballers in the county. Um, so it's probably a wee bit more difficult there at times to, to, to you know, know that for fellas to accept that they're not on. And, you know, and the, I suppose the, the, the other thing with that is that, you know, at, at, at county level now, and I suppose at, at all levels, there is a case to be, you know, people will say, well, he's a better footballer than, than him. And they might be right. But that doesn't mean he's going to be a better player in your team. He's not as good a team player. He doesn't do the same job. So it's, to have a good team, it means having a balance of players, of a balance of personalities, and that's what you're looking for. So it's 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 and it's I suppose it's getting boys to understand that as well. That it's not necessarily all based around talent or who's the best footballer. It's about fellas who fit into the jigsaw, and you, you need a certain uh, type of different players, and 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 then it's it's whoever's doing the business and whoever's you know working hardest will, 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 will get the chance, and if the if they take it, well then they'll stay there. So that whole idea of right clarity and being open and honest right from the word go, particularly with your club players, I think we've probably seen five people leave the throne squad now. We're not going to go into that tonight, but I'm just saying I suppose. The demands keep getting greater at, 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 at Intercounty and people who are investing a lot and are not getting the minutes on the field to justify that are starting to question that probably. I, well, I would I would say so, you know, and probably the the COVID experience had something to do with that as well and that people, maybe county players were in a bubble and that they were training really hard and that was their life. I suppose maybe the the the, the period of COVID got yeah. maybe players out of that for a while, and they saw they started living their lives in a different way. And I suppose after that, when they came back and and were back into that that intensive training, said, "Look, that that's that's grand if you if if you're getting rewards at the end of it." And obviously with Tyrone that you mentioned, Tyrone get a lot of rewards, and the, the, you know they get a lot of profile out of it. But I suppose after a period of time, fellas said, well, look, we've we've been here right while we've, we've invested a big part of our lives in this. We've got, look, we've got, <laughs> at the end of last year, they got an All-Iron medal. Yeah. So thinking, well, look at here, what what else is there to get now? Maybe another All-Iron medal, but if I'm, if I'm going to be doing a lot of training, missing out a lot of life opportunities, and not getting that much game time, and, and maybe be better going back to my club. And at that, yeah. you know, it's, 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 it's possible that that will happen more and more. But it's still a very attractive lifestyle too, you know, for fellas who enjoy the training and you're having great crack, you're having a, your social life to a degree is the football. You know, you're, you you mightn't be able to drink at times of the year, one thing or another, but you're still having great crack with your mates all the time. Yeah. You're going through tough training sessions, you're going away at weekends, you know, and, and, and you're, you know, for a lot of young lads, they be going two or three nights a week doing fitness then on their own, so they're doing that in an organised level, you know. So there's a there's a lot of a uh, you know positive to it, and and you know it, it's not as 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 uh, as negative as as some people would yeah. make out, you know. I think a lot of a lot of people enjoy it, and and even though times people say the football isn't that attractive, when you when people buy into it, you know the 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 they want to prepare well, they want to give themselves the best chance of winning, and that that's that's what it's all about. Yeah, and as you say, it's friends for life as well. Right, so yeah. any, any comments on all that, that whole area? Yeah, look, I think, I think, I think Malachi is probably he's hit the nail on the head, you know, and I know myself looking back playing county football and uh, I do kind of, I do smile to myself every so often, just, you know, just on the crack and I spoke down to McGinley about it, about different times and even, um, even chatting to Brian a couple of times about it and we probably didn't realise how how good you had it. You didn't realise how good you had it playing and fading away all the time. And just there's certain things maybe you'd come back and remind me, even a song on the radio, you'd kind of think you'd, you'd yeah. sit and laugh. You would kind of go to yourself, oh, I mind that happen on the way down to the bus down to Kerry or something. It'd be something like that. And people do kind of paint it in a negative light, you know. And then, you know, if you're chatting with all the fellas, even with Calvin, even with Fermanagh, that they, they all really, really enjoy the training. They all really enjoy playing football at a high level. And, People do forget about that. That sometimes as footballers, and you do want to always test yourself against the best. Even at a club, you're always thinking, right? Can you test yourself at the best? But 
go back to Malachy's point just about picking the players and sometimes I think it, it comes down to honesty and finding the clarity to the players and as if the players can say that you're a man of your word or, or you're a woman of your word you're never going to have a problem and sometimes I had a good saying one time maybe it's not the best footballer but the best person and people might say well he's a far better footballer but then he could be a better but the other player could be a better person on the field and just more or less just yeah. he could he could he could do the work free, he could do the unseen work. And and again, you try to chat to every player. And I know with the 21s, as, as Maliki says, it's tough at county level. You do try to get around them players a lot. Like, you know, when you do try to chat to them, and as I always say to the players, like there could be 35 players, 30 players. It's hard getting around everybody. But I said, don't be afraid to come and give me a bell. Don't be afraid. I said, we can we can meet for a coffee. We can meet for we can meet for a chat. I said, I don't mind that. And with even with the club as well you do because anyway, it's, it's probably like a boat no matter what and that you are going to have your first 15 no matter what and every every game you have your first 15 and that's without a doubt that's the rules the next rules is from 15 to 20 or 16 to 26 you're always going to have that so you need the 16 to 26 to be pushing the 15 but below that you need your 35 to 26 to be pushing the 16 to 20 and if they can see the the value in that and the buy-in in that there, again, that goes back to your culture. But again, it comes probably with, again, with clarity. And I can't say this. See, just being completely honest with the fellas. Um, the fellas would rather, and fellas or girls, they would rather hear it front up that, see, see this is what's yeah. happening. Or, yeah. There's no point to see Delvin right the, the corner. Just tell them straight up. Could, could I ask you, Rachel, just that the, always the temptation, I suppose, is you focus generally something. There's a tendency to focus on your 18 or 20. See the five that are not getting game time and players in general. How do you find time as a manager to give them all time, equal time? And particularly, probably, maybe, maybe your time should, most of your time maybe should be spent with those five or six who aren't making it. And, and how <laughs> you can help them to actually, you know, improve and possibly give them a greater chance to make the first 15. Yeah, look, I think again, if you can have your time in before training or whatever. I'm, I'm a great believer. Maybe some people say I chat too much now, but I'm, <laughs> I could, I could able to get round to some of the fellas and like usually anyone from one to fifteen is always content. Now, of course, you can tell them what way the matches went and going out there, but you kind of maybe before training or whatever, like instead of maybe sitting maybe with your management or sitting with your <laughs> and your management chatting about the game, whatever. I'd like to get around and go like I know last yeah. night at Calvin training, I got around chatting with a couple of four or five of the players, six, maybe some of the boys that weren't in the squad, just general chit chat and bit of chat and seeing how they're going, what they're doing, ask them what's expected of them at training, you know, and tell they can some of the boys will ask you, well, what do I have to be doing? And and then you tell them, like I say, well, this is what you have to be doing. And same with Fermani, you you told the players what they have to be doing, or you ask themselves for well, you point to a player there, or are you up to his level of fitness? And if he says no, and you can just say, well, look, you know what you have to go and work on. You try to work on that. And you give them tips, you give them going. But I think it's generally, I think everyone likes to feel involved. And you, yeah. you can't have to you, you can't have to bring everyone with you. Yeah. Molly, can we just go ahead? There's a, que yeah. there's a question that's coming here, Roger. Right, but I'm going, to, I'm going to break maybe in five minutes just that's to take okay. two or three questions in the audience. I'm going to ask one more here just that that's you know, there is a tendency that I think it's, it's fair to say that most people get involved in management because they come through the coaching pathway. Um, but the skills for being a good coach are significantly different from the skills maybe to be a good manager or are they Maliki? Well, I think I think the, the, I think that they're two. They are two completely different things. In that, coaching is about coaching the the skills of the game, coaching the um, team play, and all that. There, managing is a different thing. Is that it's about managing players and getting the best out of players. So they are two different things. But I would say that most coaches, you know, manage and and, and most managers coach as well. So I think it's it's about having it. It's very hard to to be one without being the other. And I think it's it, it is a case of of uh, you know it, you know I suppose that there's usually one person at the end of the day has to make the final decision if you like 
but and, but that doesn't. I know in my own experience that that doesn't often happen. It's not a case of, you know, myself and the the rest of the management team sitting down and then me going and making my own decision. Usually, you have a chat about it and you make the decision together. And there's nights that you know if if I had one opinion and the other lads thought something completely different, I'd usually say it right here, okay. That if you think that way, we, we'll go that. You know, so it's 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 very much working together all the time and and, and valuing other people's opinions. Um, with with regards to the coaching as well, it's 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 about being on the field all the time. It's about being involved in the coaching. And obviously, you know, with, with myself and and up with 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 Glenn at the minute, of Ryan Porter's obviously with me, and 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 Ryan's one of the the top coaches around. And Ricey knows that. Um, so like, there's no, there's no point me going in and, and interfering with what Ryan's doing because he's top quality. But at the same time, you're all as involved in 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 it. We're chatting all the time about what what we think we should do, and you're involved in all the football end of it and and getting involved in bits and pieces of it as well. So I think the two of them are 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 very much uh, hand in hand. And I think it'd be very hard to do one without yeah. being involved in the other. But I'm just wondering, Maliki, from you, from systems of play and, and team strategies, obviously your fingerprints have to be over the coaching from that perspective, I imagine, how you want the team to play. Yeah, I think so. I think that w- would be the case and that the, the manager would have to, you know, be obviously... Uh, strong in that area, and that he, yeah. you know, that's that's you sort of say, listen, I think this is the way. But 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 don't get me wrong, it's it's not by any means, you know, me going in and dictating. But yeah. it's again very much, and, and I, again, just you know, I'm, I'm just imagine lads and and playing with me, uh, Johnny, Bradley, Mickey, McCullen, and the the four of us work together very very closely, and we we discuss these things and we work on them together. That there. Uh, but you obviously do have to, you know, with, with regards to the way you want the team set up, with the way you want them to play, and all that sort of thing. You know, the, yeah. the, obviously the manager would have, would would have a big part to play in that. But it's very much a, a, a you know, fellas working together as well. You know, and and that bit of talking to players, the one to ones with players, do, would you do a bit of that, Maliki, as opposed to the coach? Ah, you would, yeah. And again, uh, you know, as, as Ricey mentioned, you know, it's 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 not so much even, uh, you know, I suppose what players want, and, and and you know, you mentioned about the fellas who aren't getting on the team, they want feedback. You know, they just want to know, and it's it's not it's not the, the big big palaver stuff, but but just generally, just you know, you know, and again going around and, and just saying here, look at the evening, and fellas maybe playing in league games or even in saying and and just. Given the wee pointers, look at this is what we're looking for here. This is the area we think you could improve on. But as as Ray says as well, just generally chatting a lot. You know, it does does yeah. nature you're just chatting them just in general. It's, it doesn't have to be about football. It's and it's just it's just building up relationships. You know, the yeah. building up relationships with fellas is 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 is, is oftentimes more important than 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 yeah. coaching points at times because at the end of the day. You'll win nothing unless you have a good team spirit, unless you have fellas who are prepared to work really hard for each other. And the way you get that is just by by building strong relationships and, and having the, a real togetherness in the group and uh, the boys wanting to, to play and fight for each other. So that's that's a really, really important thing. And then obviously the, the coaching and the, the team play and all the strategies come on top of that. But, but it's, it's, it's very important not to, uh, not to forget about that and, and not to neglect that in any way. And would you do any specific team building? I mean, there's a lot of people go to the beach or go go kart or whatever it might be. Are you a believer in that as a one-off from time to time? Yeah, I would. You know, would, 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 you know obviously the last year has been difficult with, with the COVID restriction and all that, but you know, yeah, certainly in the past. And just anything, it's just about just getting the boys to spend time with each other and have a, a bit of crack and, and not really thinking about football at all. It's just, just having the crack and, you know... Yeah. As Racy mentioned there, but you know his memories of Tyrone. He di- he didn't mention about games or anything else. He mentioned going down on the team bus and so and stuff like that. That's the memories you have, and that's that's what brings fellas close together. And 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 it, it's 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 the it's when your backs are to the wall in a game. It's 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 times like that 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 bring yeah. fellas together that will fight for each other rather than having a you know a a, a coaching uh, yeah. drill or something that went well. You know, so it's it's, it's very much getting that mix. But I I I, I do think that that. It's very important to do just those wee things just to bring lads closer together and have a yeah. bit of crack and a bit of bonding, if you like. Yeah, Tony, he talks about taking money of Kieran McKeever in the back of the bus playing poker. So there you are, I'd well believe it. <laughs> 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 so, Ricey, sorry, Ricey, 
just just in that whole area around maybe you know coaching skills, management skills, player one to ones, or building team spirit. Any comments? I again, it's it's it can it's sometimes it can be hard, sometimes it can be easy, and I'm I'm just I know people probably think I'm harping on this here, and I just do I just do think people just like honesty. And you get more team spirit, and you get more you get more people if you're completely honest with with people. Sometimes you might be telling them the best news that they don't want to hear, and yeah. but if you're if you're front up with it, and they can't, and they and they see you're trying to do the right thing, you'll get more of a buy-in. And then what happens? If, it's just I like with the one v ones players now, and you have to see with the modern day that. I think that people are very well educated now, so people know what. And a lot of people now, and I've looked at even from when I've played from from county football. I personally think that the skill level of players has gone through the roof, and um, even at club level, and even conditioning. So, so fellas know what to do. It's just it's just now trying to buy, trying to get that in. And sometimes you might you mightn't get it right. If Malachi says there, just maybe someone can say, well, he he didn't do it. But you kind of know in the back of your head if you've a great team spirit, and if you do say the one they ones and the players say, "Look, this is what I think you should be doing better," but having a bit of crack with the boys, and yeah. I know like myself, maybe you, even with the girls, you can always have a bit of crack. And I know maybe after a, after a training session, just one night, and I think it didn't go too well for the girls, and we were kind of just we had one of these sessions. It must have been just after COVID. I just said to them, "Come here, sure, we'll." We'll go down to Desi's here for a coffee, or whoever's not, whoever's not driving, we'll we'll take a pint. The whole team, we all we all went into Desi's. That was it. One drink. I said, we'll forget it. This training session went on. Next night, training session. It was just something different. The girls yes, enjoyed right. it, and it just the next night, training. It just the whole thing just lifted, and it's yes. it's just funny things. And again, the players themselves. If, if the players, if the culture, again, you easy to talk about culture, but if if the players are know what the goal is and they know what they're here, they'll drive that on themselves. And as Molly like says, sometimes maybe the best days away is just when when the players are heading away in a bus together and yeah. just they're they're in each other's company and you know yourself and you won the change room that that there's a good vibe about that you know you you know you're doing something right whether you're whether you're winning or losing. I think you're right. I think something off the cuff from time to time is great because training can get a bit samey if you're Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, whatever night you train. If you just do something a wee bit off the cuff from time to time, it can change things. The other thing I'm thinking about, the, a lot of coaches maybe in the audience here, maybe on their own sometimes. It's difficult. I, from my experience with, when I was coaching my own club in Gorgia, you probably were set up the cones, you're doing the coaching, you're doing the management. It was fine, hard to find time during sessions for maybe really one-to-ones. Last couple of years, maybe working along with Tony, and can address of that with Tony maybe doing a bit of coaching, you really did get time to get to know players a lot better. So I think you know you definitely for the people in the audience, you do need some help. Um, you need something to get a bit of weight off. I would say Tony, like you, you can get the more, you can get the more people involved, the better. Yeah. And it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what they're doing or what they're going to, even even if they're going to help you lift up cones or whatever, or they're going that day. It's something that you're not doing, like. Yeah, you're, just, you're you're not going to lift that cone. So if someone's going to lift the cone after the session, you could be maybe you could be going over and having a chat maybe with number twenty two in the panel, exactly. and walking up to the change rooms instead of maybe going up chasing after a ball or two. Like now, the, now don't get me wrong, the fella lifting the cone at the top of the pitch, he's highly valued and he's highly going. Don't get me wrong, but yeah. having that having that chat having that chat with that boy, number twenty two, number twenty six. Yeah. More or less says that he's. You just don't know what what he thinks yeah. coming into the session, exactly. and it, and it does make a difference. And and it's more or less just getting more people involved. And no matter you might think, oh god, he's got a big backroom team and like in the club, so what does he need that with the club? But come here, yeah. see the more people you have involved and around. I I, I guess I think it gives you yeah. more. It, it takes the pressure of the coach and the manager. Yeah, it's worth just waiting and going. So listen, Tony, we might take now just to make the audience feel involved. We'll take maybe a question or two that came in. I think you mentioned, Tony, that there's a few... I, there's there's a few questions here, uh, here, ma'am. So I think a short answer as possible might be best because <laughs> because there's a, there's well there's five or six here, so we're, we we can try to get through them as quick, and we don't want to be we want to answer them as uh, surely for the coaches who's who's took time to text in here. So. 
Brenton has asked, is there a difference in coaching teams from a more urban background rather than smaller rural areas? Malachi? Um, the, the, the probably is in that the, in the rural areas, I would often say that that in, in some places, and I would imagine Gaelic football is the be all and end all, and that it is it is the, the number one sport. Everybody that plays any sport nearly would be playing Gaelic football. No, as it's, it's, it's possible that if there's a tradition, if there's a winning tradition, you know that that that's a big start. In the bigger towns. There's a lot of other attractions as well. You know, there's you know you could have lads playing soccer, you could have fellas playing rugby. There's a lot of other attractions as well. You know, and and and, and I would definitely say that it is more difficult to get players through from you know from minors right to and be committed to senior footballs in the in the bigger urban areas. So I would imagine th th there is challenges there, but then obviously you have advantages there too. You've you've far bigger numbers and, and oftentimes bigger resources so uh, it, it, that can outweigh the disadvantages at times as well as I suppose it depends a lot on, on how the whole thing's handled. Thank you Malachi. Uh, Ryan, one for here from Sean. Any advice on managing players who don't trust the ability of other players in the team? <laughs> I, see, I, see. I see. Sorry Ryan. Cheers Tony. What have I ever did on you? <laughs> <laughs> no, look, again, again, that again, that comes down. It, it just comes down a lot to the culture and a lot to environment. And um, for for anything that you can do and for anything that you you want to do, um, everyone does have to trust each other. And again, trying to get down to the bottom why the players don't trust or what they don't trust. It's a tough one because see see everyone has their own has their own has, has their own ideas, but a lot of it has to come down just to the culture of the team and more or less try and have the culture that we all for us to win we have to trust each other here and for us to go to go on out we need everybody we need maybe I could be the star player but I'm not going to pass him the ball because I don't trust him at the end of the day and I think it was, we, we all know as coaches if that was the case. You would just double team. You just double team that star forward, and you're not going to get anywhere. Um, I think again, it comes down to the coach and manager. It's probably going to, have to put that point across that he's going to have to again. You've got to paint the picture, sell the picture that you need. You need everyone from one to to thirty to go. And again, it goes back on to what what I kind of said earlier. Sometimes you need the best person, not the best footballer playing. And sometimes maybe you do have to look at that, but it comes down to the culture. It comes down to what it's very hard to get that thrust. And probably I can't, haven't really given the right answer, but it's you, ha you have to show that player that the player that he doesn't trust is as equally as important. And if we didn't have this player, you're we as a club or a team, you're not going to reach your goals as winning because it takes it's it's 15 on the field. It's not 14, it's 15 on the field that usually get the results done. I think you've answered very well, Ryan. Right, there's a few more here, and I'll look through them. Uh, this is, this is, is a few, we've been looking at a few answers here from Vincent uh, Malachi. When planning your, se your season at the start of the year with your coaching staff, number one, do you believe in having a forwards and a defenders coach? Uh, again, I suppose uh, different at, at at club level. You'd be very lucky to to have that. Um, maybe at county level, you would maybe be more try to be more specific and and, and work in both at, at at club level. I would I would imagine. Look, it'd be great. And and I suppose you wouldn't necessarily have a, a different coach for it, but you would maybe work. You know, have, have you know work the forwards together at times, work the defenders at times. Uh, but you know, I worked them in units, but not necessarily. I w wouldn't think, you know, in, in most clubs, you wouldn't have a, a, a forwards coach. Right. I'm gonna, Vincent, if you don't mind, I'm gonna skip one, skip that one or two because Malgi sort of answered that question. The fourth one there, Malgi. Uh, finally, how do you start that spark to get entire team to believe in themselves? How do you, how do you start that spark? <laughs> Um, again, I think it 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 
it goes back to, to I suppose, trying to, trying to paint that picture or trying to give the boys a vision that that they can believe in and that they can see that if we work and we do what 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 they're asked us to do here we have a chance now again but you have to be sensible you have to be realistic so if a team is struggling you know at the bottom of a division division two year after year but they're still in the senior championship and you suddenly at the start of your time we're going to win the senior championship mm-hmm. After a couple of weeks, you can lose them boys because they think this is this man's talking nonsense. So it's 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 being realistic about what what you can and and, and giving them an an achievable goal. And then I think it's about it's about looking and and really prioritising what what's the main areas you need to work on. You know that every team's not the same. It's looking at the group of players and that could be you know that could be some deficiencies to have. It, it, it could be discipline. It could be some type of team play. It it, it, it could be. Training habits could be, but just just sort of prioritizing what areas you need to work on, and then really concentrate that. And and remember, it's 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 very much it's a, it's a step by step process. It's not you're not going to achieve everything in 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 a week or two or anything else. And it's, it's it was the Clive Woodward line uh, was it uh, winning doesn't come in a straight line. You know it's ups and downs and up. You don't know you don't expect it just to go in an upward cor- You know an upward graph all the time. So it's it's. Uh, that's, I suppose, that's the, 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 you know, the, the, the way it, it, you have to look at it. Very good, Malachi. Right, two, two, uh, one for you, Ryan. Uh, from look, from look here. Uh, looking for an opinion on coaching guys of different abilities when coaching skills. With regards to the club, would you coach your senior and reserve teams together for numbers or keep them separate? Um. Uh, Again, how you, how you with the clubs? That's every you would like. You would leave, you'd like to work everyone together. And if again, maybe you could say maybe it could, it could cause a bit of resentment or whatever. Maybe everyone split. But with regards with skills, I think again you can come down to the area. Like if you can at the start, you could be setting up a skill session for the players. You could have maybe some of the lads that you do think are more. You could put them into one group, and you could put maybe the other, the other lads in that that probably need. Need to be working on the skills and but at the same time it's always nice maybe for lads maybe if, if when the, especially when the county players come back into the club that they do spend time maybe with the lads and you can you can learn off you can learn off I, like i'd be a great believer that because you're the one club everyone should be in together and everyone can learn off everyone and then like again you come back i know i'm harping on here but you come back to that culture word that there that's when your senior players and go and that they take time out and that they talk to the players and they they talk to the players that maybe not be that aren't as skillful and more or less just giving them advice and coaching them because at the end of the day it's the players that play and I you always want to see anyone do better and and that's that it comes down to what you want to set up if you want the players to coach if the players can coach on the field or if they can manage on the field there's really not really a job for me and Maliki to do like. Or yourself or Tony. Like if you see the players looking after and making changes, that's great. Or if you see a player saying, No, you should do this, do this, try solo with your left foot, practice not there, sure. I'll 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 practice with you. You get a far good you get a far good buzz and then you go back to that thing again, you feel everyone's in together. Very good, Brian. But to finish off, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give Malachi a difficult one, Brian, here because he gives you a difficult one. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. From, from, from David here. Come, Tony. From David, if a club adult team has a large pre-season squad doing their strength and conditioning programs and are d- d- diligent and compliant in buying into it, any ideas on how best to reduce the squad playing numbers to a more manageable number in advance of returning back to training on the pitch? That's a tough one. Uh, well, I, I think it goes back to, to Ryan's answer there. I, ah. I, don't, I don't see the need to be cutting it down unless it's, it's, it's you know, if it, like unless it's way over 50, 60, 70 boys, something like that there. You know, if if, if if all the boys are buying into it and, and doing the strength and conditioning and, and doing everything you ask, well, then I think they all deserve to be out on the field working as well. And particularly early in the season when you're not probably not working as much on, on real tactical play and... and, and uh, you know, team play stuff that that 
you know, there's a lot of, I suppose, physical work involved. There's a lot of uh, skill work. I think all the boys can can play in that. And I think, it, you know, what Ryan said exactly right, I think at all clubs it's very important that, that all the fellas feel, you know, very much a part of it and they're all learning from each other and all. all, all going. And I think it only comes later on in the year or or if, it's, if, if you feel that the numbers are too big or... The, the 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 level of, of skill between the top and the bottom is 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 too great that it's not adding value to the same. Then I think you have to then make a, a decision that's going to be right for for the club, you know. But I think for as long as possible, the, the idea would be to keep them all together. And and as you as we all know, two time you will to natural waste. It's boys will 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 go away and one thing and another. And you'll find that the, the boys, are, but you can also get surprise, nice surprises that, that there's a number of lads who have who are really buying into it and working really hard and could be, uh, you know, a big plus for you going forward. Thank you, Malachi. Oh, that's great, Roger. Hand you back right, to you, okay, Roger. Listen, again. I don't want to go too much over time. So it's 25 past. But I'm going to ask a few wee things here that that are close, maybe to my own heart, but also reflect some of the the questions that came in. So I'm just thinking of our club coaches now, club maybe adult coaches. S and C, strength and condition and athletic development, performance analysis, all the I'm not saying cottage industries that have grown up around the GA, but you know, a lot of these are now being delivered by experts in inverted commas. I'm just wondering, um, how do you feel about that? And I think it confu- it, is, it has a potential to confuse the club manager in the sense that maybe he fe- he or she feels that they don't really know enough about S and C. And they leave it up to these private bodies coming in. How do you best manage that, Maliki? It is. There's no doubt, Tony it's, or, or Roger. It's a it's a tricky one, in that I would say, and, and, and I'm sure race is exactly the same. The you know the 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 top clubs now, I'd say, are at the same level as as Intercounty was, you know, ten years ago. You know the the, the level of expertise and the 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 resources and 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 everything else um but as you say and and what happens then is is once you go down that line and players get used to it it's very hard to go backwards so it it it, it, the, 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 you know it, it keeps snowball uh but it is difficult for for clubs who haven't you know who who haven't got that that expertise obviously in the club and then have to have to bring it in from outside so it's it's, it's a big job handling all that but it is very important as well because you know it, the the, the strength and condition. Obviously, you know, young lads are getting stronger, looking after themselves, and the game has become so much based around athleticism, mobility, and all the rest. If you're falling behind in that area, then it, it, it it's going to impact you. The the performance analysis as well is 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 really crucial. Uh, so it, 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 it's 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 one of these areas that that it, it is it's a difficulty for for some clubs, but it is important as well, and it's 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 yeah. I suppose it, it is it's a case of how to manage it. I think I, I think from my point of view, I think the club manager needs to have a worker knowledge, you know, because I think sometimes we think it's more sophisticated, or sometimes it's made out to be more sophisticated than maybe it actually is. And if some fella isn't able to perform the skills of the game in the last 10 minutes, then maybe he just has an issue with his aerobic fitness and he needs to go down and get a bit more hard work. You get a lot of people now you saying, oh, well, I'm in the gym two nights a week or three nights a week. You know, gyms can potentially, I think, become a bit of a hiding place for some some players, not all players. But I think we have to be aware of that maybe as well. No, I, th- I think you're right, Roger. And as well as that, I, I think a lot, of, a lot of players and a lot of young fellas now I'd say a lot of them have got to the level now where they're strong enough to play Gaelic football. They don't need, they're not going to get that many more gains by spending a load of time in the gym. Obviously, they, they, they have to do specialised things and, and, and maintain that. But I think, as you say, they probably would get more gains at this stage by being out in the field, working hard on their, on their aerobic fitness, but also the skills, the game and so on. So I think that balance could be definitely redressed a wee bit and that you know and i suppose looking to it's only natural we're saying earlier on the gyms uh, i suppose uh, many nights it's, it's it's a nicer place to be it's a more comfortable environment than out, than out the, the pitch uh but but I, I definitely agree with you there i think that maybe it's it's uh you know the the other areas are at least as important maybe right if i just could maybe move on and ask you just just in terms of all of those pieces in the jig so you know for the high performance player nowadays the you know the technical proficiency, the tactical awareness, the team play, the the S and C, the athletic development. 
is there any of those that you would see as as king? Is skill still king, or or is fitness king, or where where would you say it? What would you say is most important? Um, I think they're all more important, believe it or not. But look, definitely, I think skill skill will get you. To, skill probably will, and and I'll I'll go I'll go back on it again. I think like I think probably inter county players now at the minute. 95% of them, 85, like they're too for it and they can go and they do put on. No, um, probably, probably myself playing, I, I didn't kick too much off the left, to tell you the truth. And uh, again, but uh, going back to what Malik is uh, for the high performance, I think it, it is all important. And no, you do, you hear people saying, no, I like to spend more time in the gym. Like I, I know myself, like a lot of the Calvin boys do spend a lot of time. Working on the skills before training and after training, they do they do put a huge emphasis on it. But at the same time, they do put a they do put a good emphasis on the, on the strength and conditioning. Um, it has it has become more athletic, and I do know like a lot of the players do they do spend a lot of time watching videos, like and they do they do it. We even with Fermana and even even going back to like even the club scenes, like I'm sure Malahi will tell going with Glenn that there is. Players are more aware now. You have YouTube, you have different stuff on, and young people are. It's a different generation. Um, again, like and people are harping on, but they're all important. And but if you're a fella that's really, really fit and has ticked all the boxes and he's lacking in skills, I would tell him I'll be, put, I'll be putting down. And again, as, as a coach, as a manager, it's knowing the different players to go and see. Yeah. It's knowing, yeah. it's knowing your player. There's no point. Like again, that's when you have a quiet word and say to them, "Well, look." You're flying here, and this, you're hitting all the top marks. Why don't you spend? Uh, you'd be better off spending maybe see see an hour or two down practicing your skills at the pitch. Yeah, take enough. some of that. Okay, that's no one you're playing. So there's one last question I'm going to say with you, Rice here probably and maybe is this whole thing about reflective practice, another buzzword that's been used nowadays, self reflection, whether it be for the manager or the coach. But how do you go about trying to get your players to self reflect and really? Come up with some of the answers of sales. <laughs> Jeez, that's the first time I've heard self-reflecting. Maybe I'm behind. <laughs> I'm behind in the whole thing. Um, no, again, it comes down. To, it, it comes down to what the team. It comes down to what the team wants. If the t- if the team wants to enhance itself and the team wants to go, like a lot of the boys will come on Tuesday night after training, and a lot of boys will say, like, we were. We were poor. We were crap. Like we got the result, but we could get better. And um, again, it comes down to a lot of the players. Like you can ask them to do their own analysis. You can ask them to do their own analysis of the game. Like and yeah. just yeah. to come out and just say, look, ask if they, if they analyze it then right or whatever. Like so. Um, but like everyone wants to do it. Like everyone wants to. Do it. I know as a manager, you're always you're you're always looking at the best, or the coach, you're always looking at the best. But again, if you, if you have a good group of players. They will analyze it themselves. Um, yeah. Like if if you if, if you're referred sometimes I sometimes say that as well. Do you want the truth or do you want the fuzzy story? And the boys will say we want the truth. Well, you just yeah. tell them then and say, well, this is what we could do better or this would. But at the same time, we, you can always learn from other teams. Yeah. And you can always learn. I'm a big believer. Maybe saying you can learn maybe from what other teams did wrong, and you can you know it's us doing that wrong. But could we learn from that team doing that? Um, if players are open, if you have again, you go back to that trusting group. If they have a good trusting group, and they're able to take the constructive criticism, and say, "Well, look, I, but maybe we'll not try to do that again," you know, and then you just move on. You you, you have to be brave about it because you do spend a lot, a lot of time in it, and that's what it is. Because nowadays your time's important. Everyone's going. I don't have time. You're buzzing about. As long as everyone appreciates that everyone's doing it for the greater good, and we're spending time doing it. Yeah. Okay, Ricey, thanks a million for that. Just last question, Malachi, this one came up a couple of times. Just how far do you go to try to keep the Maverick on board? Maybe you should ask this of Ricey, I'm not quite sure, but I could always go back to you. <laughs> no, let Malachi, let Malachi. <laughs> Come and see if you're going to say that for me. You, <laughs> I'm you, you have met the Maverick. <laughs> <laughs> um, look at it, I suppose, again, it's, it's, a, it's a tricky one. The The idea I suppose of the maverick player is that there's something wrong with him you know that he has some deficiency whereas 
I suppose that that maverick player can be the difference between win and lose, and he's that wee, wee bit you know, something maybe different about him. Uh, I suppose the only thing that becomes a problem is if he's if he's not playing for the team, he's doing his own thing, and I think it's just it's just a case of of working with him, uh, showing how his actions are helping the team, and at other times if they're not helping the team, and two time. Hopefully the penny will drop with him about what you want of him, what he what he's doing well, what you need him to improve, and eventually if it doesn't drop with him, well then if he's dropped himself, he'll you know he he'll he'll learn the hard way or you know one way or another it'll it'll it'll, it'll come to the surface. But I think again it, it all the time I have to be looking to see is 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 it adding value to the team. If it is, well then it it it's 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 worth. Uh, working with him and, and keeping him on board. If it's not, then you know he ha- has to change if if you want to get the best out of the team. And I think most players, if the environment's right, and most players, if 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 you if you build up again what we've said all along, if you build up that trust with players and and have a good relationship, the will most players will will see over time and, and go here. I know, I know, I know. Look at that. I know I'm I'm doing that wrong. right. And and they will over time change. And you know, they're not 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 going to be exactly the way the the best team player you have but then they bring other things to the party that, that that the other players don't have as well so you'd be hoping that through through chatting and feedback and all the rest that, that they'll you know be, be a big part of the team you know have you ever had that type of player maybe that you know left the panel or dropped them dropped themselves and came back and they get a better player and whenever they had a wee bit of time to maybe have a think or reflect I'm not going to mention any names. But, no, of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you know what? I probably have, and, um, and 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 probably just what you said is is that it did go nearly like that, and 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 you know, fellas did maybe leave and then came back and did come back nearly and nearly you know a better player. And as Racy mentioned earlier, nearly, you know, and I don't mean this, and I don't take no credit, but nearly came back a different type of person in a way, in that, the, you know, they said it since, you know, that it nearly was a good thing that they, that they realised maybe that, 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 you know, we weren't thinking of the team as much as it should have been and so on, and that they probably learned. And, you know, as, as like us all, when you're, when you're 20 or 22 or 23, you think about things a different way than you do when you're, when you're, Forty or so, like myself, you know, it, 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 uh, it you know, it, it, it does, and, and, and when them fella, when them young lads get to that age, they'll be looking back and thinking, you know, it, 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 it you know, I, I know now why I didn't know, know what it was that the, the one from me and why the one, but you know, so it is, it, 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 it and it, it is just a, a case of, of. Uh, Look at hoping that the that, that fellas will, 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 will buy into it. And here, there's no no point in saying there's there's other times fellas will just say, listen, no, I don't don't agree with what you're doing, and 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 yeah. you know you, you, you there's always that possibility of losing them, but you'd hope hope you wouldn't, you know. Yeah. Well, listen, we said we'd go for an hour, maybe we're just slightly over the hour. So just just to thank both you, listen, it was very insightful and it's very humble, and we really do appreciate you coming on tonight, Malachi and Racy.